Words have the power to move us. Echoing, when they are true and good and beautiful, the divine one through whom all things were made, and in whom we find redemption and everlasting life. It is possible for words also to wound us, echoing not the divine word, but the rebellion of the evil one. These words tear down and deceive and bring death. Our public discourse today is filled with these words and with a kind of noise that distorts and distracts. Because of this, our world needs to hear the word of God more than ever. Conversely, the last thing Satan wants us to do is to hear the word of God and heed it. That is why the church's ministry of the word is so important. To in the midst of a culture very confused and noisy and filled with words that wound to proclaim God's truth and his love. The Second Vatican Council's dogmatic constitution on divine revelation, Dane Verlin says that in his goodness and wisdom, God chose to reveal himself and to make known to us the hidden purpose of his will, by which through Christ, the word made flesh, man might in the Holy Spirit have access to the Father and come to share in the divine nature. God shows himself to us so that we can come to know him. Know him not like science, but like marriage, an intimate communion. You see, the Word of God is not a book. It is a person, Jesus Christ, who is the fullness of divine revelation and the center of the universe and human history. As the perfect revelation of the Father, Jesus Christ shows us who God is, and in his incarnation, the Lord also perfectly shows us who we are without the distortion of sin, God's beloved sons and daughters. Christianity is not a natural religion, finding inspiration in the daily events of life alone, like the beauty of nature or friendship or family life, although those are good things. And they do reflect God's goodness, truth, and beauty. Christianity is all about the proclamation of what God has shown to us and done for us. Christianity is a revealed religion. It proclaims God, who shows himself to us, who speaks and acts, revealing his love for his creation and his creatures. In just a moment, I will institute you, your theologians, as lecturers men commissioned to proclaim the Holy Scriptures in the liturgical assembly, and more broadly, to bring the message of salvation in Jesus Christ to men and women and children everywhere. Thus, with your help, others will come to know God, our Father, and His Son, Jesus Christ, whom He sent, and so be able to reach eternal life. You will not be effective proclaimers of the Word and later hopefully preachers of the word, without being in a deepening and transforming friendship with our Lord, the Word incarnate. As the saying goes, you cannot give what you do not have. So I implore you to open wide the doors of your heart to Christ evermore. As you take this step in the midst of your formation, I also implore you to recapture a sense of amazement at what God has done in human history especially in his son's life and death and resurrection, his ascension and the pouring out of the Holy Spirit, and in your life as well. If you aren't amazed, it will be very hard for you to evangelize others. We have a lot to be excited about. God has shown us his love. And others around us, without being conscious of it, are yearning for freedom and new life in Christ. As lectors, I encourage you to model yourselves on our blessed mother, who cherished all that she witnessed and heard, reflecting on the life, words, deeds, death, and resurrection of her son. She is the model of all who ponder the word of God 
and Propina, and so she is the model for theologians as well. May the Word of God ignite a fire in your heart and make you burn with God's love, becoming radiant to those around you, so that in all that you do and say, you will show forth to the world our Savior, Jesus Christ, who is working through you, the Word become flesh, now speaking in your words as you proclaim his word. He is the perfect word of the Father, who has come in power to set us free.